setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And welcome to another podcast of the WBT. I'm glad that you've joined me. I want to talk about vacation homes. You know, I'm recording this in South Carolina. And South Carolina has so many beautiful lakes. I mean, beautiful lakes, beautiful waters, and a lot of good fishing. So many residents here have rental property. They buy nice homes along the lake, and they they use it extensively for the fishing habits that they have. I mean, there are some beautiful, big, 5, 10, 12-pounder uh, bass that you can get out of these lakes, and it is absolutely beautiful. So they have these homes, and they're considered vacation homes. But let's go over some of the rules of vacation homes, okay? So, in order to deduct the interest, a mortgage loan must be secured by a qualified residence, which could include a vacation home, if used up to 14 days per year, or 10% of the time it was rented. However, uh, uh, and it's whichever is greater, by the way. For tax purposes, the maximum amount that can be treated as acquisition indebtedness is a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars if married and filing separately if the vacation residence is used as security for a mortgage loan but the proceeds of the loan are used for investment purposes then the interest may be deductible as investment interest without regard for a cap so if you have a vacation home that you use but sometimes you also rent it out and this uh, you guys Airbnb, pay attention here because this may apply to you. So, it, but so, so let's say that you're sometimes renting out your rent, your vacation home. Income and expenses related to the rental are treated in the following ways. Okay, so let's go over that. Number one, if you rent your vacation home on a short term basis, fewer than fifteen days a year. You do not have to pay federal income tax on the rental income. On the other hand, you generally cannot deduct rental-related expenses. Okay, so just get that out of your mind that you're going to take the expense part of it. It's not going to work that way. The second thing is if you rent your vacation home for 15 days or more, you are not eligible for this exclusion. So all rental income must be reported, but could be offset by certain certain uh, rental-related expenses. Other expenses, such as mortgage interest and real estate taxes, need to be uh, apportioned to the rental use of the residence and then deducted. Yet other expenses may be deducted only to the extent of rental income. In some circumstances, the excess can be carried forward to succeeding tax years. If you seldom use your vacation home, it may not even be considered a residence for tax purposes. In that case, expenses and excess of rental income could result in a tax loss that may offset the other your other income, subject to complicated passive active rules. And that's why it's so difficult because you have to consider if it's a passive or non passive. And that's why you contact your tax accountant and go over that, okay? So let's talk about selling a vacation home. When it comes time for you and you want to make your money and you're tired of the vacation home and you're going to go and sell the vacation home, taxes may be mitigated if you can convert your home to a principal residence or its sale is part of a like-kind exchange, selling one vacation property and acquiring another vacation property. Okay, Taxpayers can exclude up to $500,000. Okay, You can exclude up to $500,000 of income after the sale of that home. $250,000 for a single taxpayer. So you can, you can exclude up to $500,000 of gain and 250000 if you're single, 
of gain from the sale of a home, but only if the home is your principal residence and other conditions are met. A special tax rule is aimed at preventing a residence that was formerly a vacation home or rental property from being converted to a principal residence and fully qualifying for that exclusion. However, a partial ex exclusion may apply. On the other hand, if you stopped using your residence as a principal residence, and it has now become a rental property or vacation home, it could still qualify for the full deduction provided other conditions are met. A like-kind exchange of a vacation home could result in no current tax, but is not easily achieved with a vacation home. Vacation homes are tough. If the vacation home is used solely for personal use, then it could qualify for the tax deferral that we talked about before. If it is used solely as a rental property, it could qualify. In the case of mixed use, it can be difficult to determine whether it could qualify for like kind. In that event, the IRS has provided the so-called safe harbor rule for to assist the taxpayers. So the best thing, if you are selling your home, and I'm speaking to all of you who have a vacation home, to really sit down with your tax advisor and go over the issues of selling that home. And if let's go off also onto Airbnb. Let's say that you are are uh, using your home, your vacation home for Airbnb throughout the year. You are now you now have a business, and you're going to have to report that income as a business income. Okay. It's the same thing with Uber. If you're Uber and if you're using your car to go out there and pick up rides and getting money for it, you're running a business, okay? So you have to think about these things before you do them because it could affect your tax situation. That's why I always say to my clients and to other people's clients too on this podcast is that when you are going to make a, a change in your life, Contact your t contact your tax accountant and go over the issue before you sign on the dotted line, just to make sure that you understand how you're going to how you're going to apply it to your tax return for that year. Okay, because the year that you buy, that's when it begins. That that's when you begin to have to think about it tax wise. That's why you pay your tax accountant big bucks. Okay, so that's it on vacation homes. I don't know if you've taken your vacation yet, but it's about time because it's fall now. You missed it. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. Well, Taxes.